I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. And if your business is anything like mine, more and more of your clients are going to assume or worse, demand that you're either doing video or, going to be, or are going to be doing it soon. And the fact of the matter is, in a key part of my business, which is real estate photography, video is becoming more and more of a crucial part of our offerings as real estate agents are looking for new and innovative ways to capture the attention of potential buyers. Well, in their quest to bring smooth camera movement to the masses, three-axis gimbal manufacturers have been coming out of the woodwork with more economical, better built, easier to set up, easier to use three-axis gimbal devices. Now, speaking for myself, I started out with smooth camera movement with the Steadicam Pilot that I literally used about for about two weeks and then dumped it the moment the DJI Ronin came out and that was about two years ago. Now the Ronin is a wonderful device and I still use that today for my larger camera and gear rigs. But fast forward to today and the handheld gimbal industry has come out with a series of handheld gimbal devices designed to handle camera and lens combinations up to three pounds or so, making the Ronin obsolete for smaller camera and lens combinations. Companies across the globe have been racing to correct the shortcomings of early gimbal devices and all the refinements are certainly welcome, specifically making these things toolless, much more adjustable, easier to balance, and frankly, less fussy with less vibration during normal operation coming from those motors. Which brings us to this. This is a Zhiyun Crane, a new three-axis gimbal device designed with most mirrorless cameras and lens combinations weighing 350 grams to a maximum of 1200 grams, which is just under 2.65 pounds. So, how does this gimbal stack up against a growing list of competitors fighting for your hard-earned gimbal dollars? So first up is build quality. My first impression is, wow. This is a finely sculpted piece of machined metal that feels solid as a mag flashlight, meaning it's made out of solid magnesium and alloy through and through. There aren't any exposed wires and the handle and the base plate are grippy, and this thing just reeks of quality and refinement. It's sleek, and it looks like it was plucked from the cockpit of either a BMW or a Porsche. Coming in at 2.8 pounds with batteries, the gimbal, though solidly built, is relatively lightweight and pretty easy to manage. With a total max weight of approximately 5.5 pounds, it won't be overly burdensome, but you will eventually fatigue but fortunately, when that happens, you can just change hands from your right to your left or from your left to your right. A few other things to note, the included case is a nice touch and there's a spot for everything. And the case itself is of a nice build quality as well. The crane comes with an extra set of batteries and speaking of those batteries, they're good for up to six hours of operation. That's nice. All in, it's a finely built hunk of metal complete with toolless adjustments in all the right places. As build quality goes, this is about the finest that I've seen so far in handheld three-axis gimbal devices. So for build, the crane gets a very solid nine and a half out of 10. So next up is ease of setup. The crane can be adjusted along any of its three axes with toolless adjustments to attain proper balance quickly and efficiently. In fact, it's a snap, especially when compared to previous generations of gimbals. I'm thinking of the MS-1 and the DS-1. And like these other gimbals, the toolless nature of the crane and the, and the fact that it's so much more adjustable 
makes it much easier to work with and that much more flexible to balance a wider variety of camera and lens combinations that fall under the max payload. Speaking for myself, I primarily use a Panasonic GH4 with a Panasonic 7 to 14 millimeter lens, but Xeon claims you can actually utilize this thing with an A7S Mark II and a 16 to 35 f4 lens. That's nice. The crane comes with two sets of batteries and thankfully a separate battery charger. Take about three hours to charge and run for about six hours under normal operation. The thumb screws are big and tactile and allow movement along all three axes, making balance, balancing just about any camera body and lens combo within the specified weight possible. All in, it just doesn't get much better or more efficient than this. So for ease of setup, the Xeon crane gets a nine and a half out of 10. So next up is ease of operation. And what strikes you at first, at least for me, is how much more versatile the operation of the crane is and how much more it can do without falling out of balance. With virtually every other handheld gimbal device that I've worked with, any sudden movement would knock the gimbal off its gyroscope and the device would start shaking and bouncing around like a fish out of water. That is clearly not the case with the crane. I mean, I've run full speed with this thing. I've done starts and stops, and it never fell out of balance or off its gyros. I mean, it shakes a little bit, but it never really lost its composure, and it manages to rebalance itself almost instantly. Now, speaking of which, Xeon claims that the advanced nature of the encoders keep the gimbal level within 0 0.02 degrees of ensuring, ensuring a level horizon. And the level line of my GH4, so long as I perfectly balanced the crane during setup, rarely came off green. It was awesome. Now, Xeon claims that the crane has these advanced slip rings that allow for unlimited rotation on any of its axes. I mean, that's a, that's a game changer. That's pretty cool. Now, changing modes is as simple as pushing this joystick right here, this little button, and you can switch movements between pan, following, and locking, and tilt following mode, whatever, there's four modes. Anyway, it, all, it can all be managed right here from the joystick. The other really cool thing is how much you can move the gimbal around without upsetting its operation. I mean, look at this. Anyway, for a future firmware update, there's a switch here called the camera control interface that will allow you to control the camera's focus and shutter from the gimbal. Now on the downside, depending on the camera and lens combo, I did notice that when properly balanced, the GH4 got in the way of the gimbal's base down here, right here, this touches. So that prevented some freedom of movement that I would have liked to have had. But even with that, the gimbal still provides a ton of flexibility over previous generations of gimbal. So all in, it's totally, totally simple. And for ease of use and operation, it just doesn't get much better than this, earning a solid 9.5 out of 10. So next up is the quality of the results. And in a word, they're amazing. With some minor caveats. First, as mentioned earlier in the review, you have to make sure that the gimbal is balanced perfectly when you're setting it up. This will limit the amount of tilt that you might experience if the gimbal isn't set up correctly in the first place. Second, one of the critical areas where, with three axis gimbals is how well they handle bounce of a normal walking pattern, meaning each time you take a step, the gimbal may bounce along with you and that can appear in the footage. That said, the Xeon handles bounce really well, but it's still there. It's just not as noticeable as it was with first and second generation of gimbals. Moreover, if you can learn to walk heel to toe, or if you can walk on your tiptoes, this is actually cut down on the amount of bounce that you're going to create in your footage. Lastly, if you're planning on running with the crane full speed, just be aware that the crane can sometimes labor to keep up and may not be able to compensate for the harsh footsteps the operator may be creating while he or she is running. And finally, there is one other thing of note here. That is, if the gimbal isn't balanced perfectly, if you go too far to the left or too far to the right, the camera will sort of tilt over to one side. The good news is it still recovers quickly, whereas previous generations of gimbals would sort of get stuck and hung up and start doing stuff like this. So we're still not perfect, but it's still really great. And those nits aside, under normal operation, I found the results to be cinematic, smooth, polished, and professional. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. The next two to three minutes will be a series of video clips in a variety of situations demonstrating the results of the Xeon Crane. And let there be little doubt, the results of this thing are simply fantastic.
So last up is value, and at $749, this puts the crane in the middle of the handheld gimbal market in terms of pricing. But the overall refinement, build quality, and advancements with the crane certainly would make me consider purchasing one of these over previous generations of handheld gimbal devices. The fact that you can make toolless adjustments quickly and efficiently along any of the axes makes mounting just about any camera and lens combination under the maximum weight possible. And the freedom of movement with the crane or the freedom of movement that this thing provides during normal operation is simply amazing. Be it the 360 degrees of rotation or the ability to move this thing around without physical limitations, especially the limitations that we experienced with previous gimbal devices, using the crane is truly a liberating experience. On top of that, the crane comes complete with two sets of batteries, an external charger, and a hard plastic case, meaning there's a lot of value for the filmmaker on a budget, especially with results like these. So for value, the crane gets a nine and a half out of ten. So to wrap up this review, we gave the Zhiyun Crane a 47.5 out of 50 and our highly recommended rating. In fact, it actually came up just a half a point short of our coveted Editor's Choice Award. The final word, this is the fourth gimbal device that I've tested in the last couple of years, and what a difference a couple of years can make. It's simply astounding to me just how far three-axis gimbal devices have come in those two years, in terms of overall price, build, ease of setup, and of course, results. Now in fairness, if operated properly, Great results can be achieved with nearly any three-axis gimbal device, and across the board, they are astonishingly better than hand-holding alone. The differences with three-axis gimbals really come down to price, payload, ease of setup, and battery life, and that's where the Zion Crane is simply exemplary. It's an all-around great gimbal. Now, just a brief disclaimer, Zion sent me the Crane in exchange for me to do a review for them. And I tried really hard not to bias my review on my results because I re received the device for free. That said, however, the crane is truly a testament, again, to how far three-axis gimbal devices have come in just two years. This is Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like these reviews, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, happy filming.